I have gotten a man from an angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord. We recall, from untold Garden of Eden, that the surrounding terrestrial angels, soon after their fall, still maintained somewhat of a heavenly shine to them while on earth. A number of ancient texts actually stated that Cain was born with this same angelic shine. Could Eve have gotten Cain through one of these fallen angels of the garden, maybe, maybe even the serpent? Even if Eve might have been claiming only that she had gotten a man, from the Lord, she apparently must have thought Cain was someone born of some very extraordinary circumstance or was of some very special significance, to state that. As our story continues, we see that, after the fall of Adam and Eve, God was forced to deal out punishments to all of the Adam, Eve, and the serpent. Curiously enough, most of the punishments to Eve seem to have some relation to pregnancy or childbirth. Why? Were they directly related to the act the serpent and Eve participated in just before the fall? We see that the serpent, too, had curses placed upon him by God, along these same lines. But he, God, turned to the serpent, in great wrath, and said, Since thou hast done this, there shall not be left thee ear, nor wing, nor one limb of all that with which thou did ensnare them in thy malice and caused them to be cast out of paradise. Apocalypse of Moses 26-1-4 Apparently, God dished out punishments, an eye for an eye. The serpent's sexual limb was cursed, maybe for the way he used it. This answers a lot. How Cain allowed himself to go down the wrong pathways in life. Even how he would be able to commit murder so easily. After Adam and his wife sinned, and the serpent had intercourse with Eve and injected filth into her, Eve bore Cain. He had the shape from above and from below, the earth. Therefore, he was the first to bring death into the world, caused by his side, as he came from the filth of the serpent. The nature of the serpent is to lurk, to kill, and his issue, Cain learned his ways. Zohar Pekude 21, 5, in another curse, directed towards the serpent, God made a prophecy, probably one of the most important prophecies in the Bible, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis, 3.15, KJV. The verse is a little complex, and is divided into two parts. First, it states that the seeds, or descendants, of this serpent will be at enmity with the seeds, or descendants, of Eve. The seeds of the serpent would form into one bloodline, Adam and Eve's seed into another. The second part of this verse simply is a prediction about Jesus, himself, coming to earth, and how it will be he, as a member of Eve's seed, who would be the one destined to bruise the serpent's head eventually. But, in the fight, members of the serpent seed would only be able to bruise Jesus' heel in the process. What does this all mean? We will see. By having him crucified on the cross, there were descendants of this serpent who, in his lifetime, were in the position to bruise Jesus' heel, i.e. they crucified him, but Jesus would be victorious in the end. By raising himself from the dead, he would be able to defeat the serpent's curse of death on the world rectifying the curse of death that Adam and Eve had brought on to everyone else. He offered everyone another chance at redemption, through his sacrifice. In this way, he would be able to crush the serpent's power, or headship, over the world. More about the specifics of this all, later. But, first, if Jesus was from the true seed of Adam and Eve, which the Bible clearly states he was, then this prophecy would have been fulfilled upon his death, burial, and resurrection. There would be seeds of the serpent, all throughout history, who would possess enmity with the bloodline that would eventually lead to Jesus. If Cain indeed had blood, or seed, of this serpent, then he and his descendants would naturally want to be up in arms against anything true of Jesus, God, and the Bible. We will soon see what this all has to do with our world of the past, even today. Those who have the blood of this serpent, and, possibly, other fallen angels, would go on to form, mixed, multitudes of people, many of which would adopt different morals, religious beliefs, and ways of life that those of the typical follower of God. What this would lead to, quite often, is one of the most important conflicts of our human history. The members of the mixed multitude are the children of the, the primordial serpent that seduced Chava, Eve, by the tree of knowledge, so the mixed multitude is indeed the impurity that the serpent injected into Chava. From this impurity, which is considered the mixed multitude, Cain, Cain, came forth and slew Hevel, Abel. Zohar 2 Bereshit A28 There is a lot more on these mixed multitudes and how many of these different thoughts, attitudes, and ways of life developed since the serpent will relate to the Bible and our world. 
we will discover how much Cain also influenced the entire world in the way of Cain. But, first, to continue with our discussion, and begin to understand how life was lived in these early days Adam, Eve, and of Cain. Please see our next video on the Islamic Prince channel, Birds, and Beasts.